Do you want to do this? Yeah. Right. You passed your luck check. It's the No Class Podcast. With your ethereal host, Eddie. And Senior Matt. Senior Matt. That's right. You know, that's right. That's right. I'm feeling festive today. I have a fiesta and then a siesta. Why? Why not, sir? That's what I like about you. No lulls in the action. No awkward pauses. None. Zero. This is the got me the zombie themed podcast. I don't know. So your barbecue update for today is we didn't have barbecue. Sadly, no barbecue today, but we had a delicious hamburger mixed in with a little bit of vehicular uh, uh, irresponsibility. It's magical. Almost tragical. Yeah, I thought you were going to get into a fight right in the middle of Juicy yeah, Burger. Yeah, I thought that young man was going to step up, but no. He didn't want none of this. No one does. Right. So I'm sorry to tell you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, have you given anybody COVID lately? I'm going to freaking kill you. Not lately. We're keeping this alive, folks. Yeah. Do not ever let it die. Yeah, it's not like it's the first disease I've given you. Or the last. That's right. Oh, here's one for you. Speaking of that, speaking of the diseases we pass back and forth. Spreading the disease. What happened with uh, Rolling Bones? You coming up on that anytime soon? Yeah, that's going to be this coming Monday, the 29th. I'm going to be on Rolling Bones. I watched an episode with Bad Mike from mm. NTRPG the other day. Uh-huh. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cool, cool. Um, I listened to the one that had our friend Stefan on it, whatever, and it was interesting. Ooh. Our friend that wrote uh, The Cradle of uh, Filth and all that stuff, yeah. Good guy, good guy. And his name was Stephen P. Anyway, but yep. Yeah. See, this is why I never try to come up with names on the exactly podcast. He's a good guy. I'm looking forward. To, he's coming to uh, Long Con. Yes, he is. And so is Matt Robertson. As the sun. special guests, that's right. friends of the con, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. Dear friends, and of they'll the con. be vending their fine products. Oh, they're vending even. Ooh la la. The finest of products. That reminds me, there's somebody that I offered a table to, and they decided, well, if we're going to table, we'll just come the whole weekend. So we'll say. Oh, well, I know who that is. Yeah, you so. do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought of that right <laughs> mid-podcast. So anyway. Both of, both of us doing the evil laugh it's blows a, out the thing. Oh, oh, oh. Because we were talking about this before the podcast, but yeah. I'll talk about it again so you people know. Mm -hmm. Me and Matt have the exact same settings. Mm -hmm. But if I'm a little louder in the podcast, it's because, boy, I am right into the microphone. Yeah. But if Matt laughs, oh, you're gonna it'll blow out your eardrums. Yeah, yeah. So it's probably a little better for him That's to sit back. I've tried to learn. I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll catch one and I'll kind of lean away as I laugh or whatever. Rots of roughs. Anyway. So what do we normally do at the, at the start of the podcast? Bullshit and waste people's time. Absolutely, talking about cheese, bread, barbecue. But I, you know, sometimes we talk about chili with beans or the long con with beans. With beans, that's one thing. You're, it's it's perfectly acceptable to have beans with, and definitely load up before you play at Eddie's table. And um, now I want a long con shirt. That's the bowl of chili with the logo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I have a sip, like man. Thanks. I think I will take a take a drink for you folks. Have a drink on me. Um, After a couple of sips of that vodka, he gets loose, folks. That's right. A little potato water gets me right. The other vegetables aren't even trying. Um, so we were just Hello. chatting with our good friend Brendan LaSalle, who, as y'all should know, is coming to the Long Con this year, along with a bevy of other very special guests. But he's all. We told him to freestyle, run whatever his heart desires. And don't forget, spa day on Sunday. Right on. I think we have to take uh, Brendan out to uh, get the old mud bath, get the cucumbers on his eyes, all that good stuff. There you go. There you go. Because he needs it. He's at a con every other week. Well, that's why they call him beast mode, man. It's too much for me. How does he do it? He, the man's a machine. Oh, he told me it's all cocaine. Oh, you heard it here first, right. folks. Go it's figure. All cocaine. Go figure. Yeah. Makes sense now. That's why, how did you say so svelte eating con food? You know, svelte. Cocaine and Twinkies. That's right. That's what, that's what it's all about. Do not engage. Do not engage. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so, yeah, long con. We're getting amped up. We're ordering t-shirts today, or we're deciding how many to order. 
podcast t-shirts. We didn't talk about that. Oh, you know, we we've got fans of the podcast that we're going to have t-shirts That's t- have true. On. Yeah. It's funny. Like, what colors do y'all like? Do you, you know? Black. Black. Duh. What size do you wear? 2X. Two two X. X. That's yeah. it, folks. That's Black 2X. Yeah. Even though I have a, like the, the slate gray, like looks like the ant races, the static on the TV. That looks from T Public. It looks pretty sharp. But, you know, always some people go, well, you don't have size X, X, size Y or whatever. Um, you can always go to T Public and look for the long con and you probably all won't one find word. us. Yeah, all one word, but uh, the long con. And we have all of our designs available for purchase. And if you ever. No, we other, don't. Oh, well, not all the designs. Right now you have to come to the con to get the lich, that dirty lich. Anyway, but we've got some exciting new designs. Absolutely. Thanks to Miss Lindsay. That's right. Uh, the long cons official art designer and what would you call it? Uh, art person or whatever. That, this uh, is when we need a camera. That's right. Um, but our official art person, art designer, whatever is Lindsay Harris of dimples and cheeks photography. And so, yeah, definitely check her out. She is very talented. So, Long Con, really excited. Got some cool new t shirt designs. We've got some great special guests that you've mentioned before, but I'll mention them again Brendan LaSalle, David Beatty, John Watson, Sean Roberson, um, potentially uh, the Grand Poobah of Torg, you know. So, ooh la la. Who's that? Uh, I think you were telling me his name earlier, weren't you? No. Okay, good. So anyway, but I, I don't name names on the podcast. Well, I wasn't going to mention names, but you're just trying to be cute. Yes, anyway, yes I am. Um, and it's failing horribly. But it's anyway, uh, but yeah, we're really excited about uh, all these special guests. He wasn't. You know, and uh, and just we're going to have some great games, a lot of fun, uh, great new venue. So everybody get your ticket, get out. Um, we got a cool new swag item for the first 100 tickets and we got them in and here i'm holding one up can you see it anyway these really cool bottle opener slash keychains very sturdy very well made gorgeous looking has our wax long con seal on it and those we're still a few tickets slots available to be able to get your get in that first hundred we're gonna have less you know, than 10 yeah do it now yeah we still have fun stuff to give away to, we love giving stuff away um particularly me but um, uh, yeah, COVID. Yep, I'm gonna freaking kill you. But anyway, I won't be giving out COVID this year, sadly. But we'll have really fun, cool swag for everybody. But the first hundred tickets are gonna get ones way cool keychains. So I get, think those cool keychains are the coolest swag we've ever given out. No, they absolutely are. You know, no, this, really. This is this is pretty nice for convention stuff. No, well, this we don't think we ever spent that much on uh, a giveaway. So, but that's how much we love our con goers and whatnot. Um, so yeah, anything else to add about the long con, sir? It's coming. It is. Like It'll be it or before not. Before you know it. Yeah. It's coming. We're excited slash scared shitless. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, everything will come together magically. Um, that means me. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so that's enough about long con. It is. I think it is. Okay. Well, our good friend Larry, who loves mm. the barbecue reports. Oh, duh. So come on down sometime. We'll take you on the tour of the finest barbecue joints in East Texas. Here. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, you have any tips for running barbarians of the ruined earth? And since I caught you flat-footed, I'll give you a minute to think about it. I'm already ready, but go ahead for once. Oh, all right. Well, I'll go first. But go ahead. Please do. So that you don't take all the damn answers. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so the first thing I would say is... Be loose. Keep it loose. Keep it light. Mm -hmm. Try to keep it funny. Mm -hmm. Keep them laughing. Mm -hmm. This is this should, in my opinion, be your beer and pretzels. Keep it light and easy breezy. Mm -hmm. Not taking it seriously game. At all. Play up the differences between this and other RPGs. Like, you want to roll low for a change. And you've got a great chance of success. Because if you get, like, a 13 in D&D, &D, you'll be like, that stat is so horrible. You got to roll under a 13 to hit somebody now or to avoid damage. Those are good odds. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. So people like that. Make people cheer for rolling a natural one for a change oh, yeah. and cry at a net 20, right? Yeah, that butts there. This, this kills them because they're so used to 20 is the best. And they roll a 20 and I go, yeah, you just got hit for double damage, you know. Ah. 
But that's also the game where I get to be Mr. Nice Guy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're one of those horribly cruel GMs like me, this is a time to earn some good karma. Earn that good karma and mm -hmm. be generous in your GMing. Mm -hmm. Let people get away with more stuff. Let them do mm -hmm. that crazy stuff that in a more grounded, realistic world, you would not. I would say if you're one of those good GMs that believes in the rule of cool, bravo, lean into it. Reasonable. Like, like yeah, sure. I mean, like one time Eddie's like, Barbarian, like, I want to jump on this rock and do a flip kick into the flying saucer. And then after I hit that, I want to like careen off and like do a full pile driver. And I'm like, all right, give me a dex check. I mean, you know. And or get swallowed by the monster. Yeah, yeah. Because I think we were fighting something massive metal thing and it's like it'll be easier to get it from the inside yeah so, he, so it's like yeah. purposely get swallowed yeah you know, do that and reward that kind of yeah, insane exactly. behavior absolutely absolutely you can always punish it in dcc yeah or wherever hell if you're living right dnd &D or whatever um but yeah definitely that freestyle have fun be gonzo i mean we talk about gonzo with dcc but really in that game Lean into the gonzo. Oh, yeah. You know, because like, I think God bless Mike Evans even says on the book itself somewhere in it or on it, like it's a combination of like Saturday morning cartoons from when we were kids and professional wrestling. And if it doesn't, maybe me or Eddie said that one time. But yeah, I mean, definitely that kind of over the top, zany, crazy, super heroic fun. Go for it. Have and Mike fun. Evans is going to be like, no, you're supposed to be playing this 100% straight laced by the book. But yeah. I mean, you've got exploding gerbils. Oh, yeah. So if you bake that in there, you've opened it wide up. Right, right. Oh, and right. I'll say another good thing is watch your favorite old 80s cartoon, be it Thundar or He-Man or Turtles or Transformers or Thundercats. Yeah. And mine that for ideas. Isn't that like a Pirates of Dark Water? That was kind of past my time. But yeah, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. anyway. Well, you're like a couple years young. Don't play like I'm the mm -hmm. old man here. Or old man, yeah. boomer. Take okay, a look, boomer. Take a look at my life. Anyway, yeah. So like, that is the Barbarian's tips for you. Oh, yeah. And all good tips. Great game. A lot of fun. Have fun with it. I guess if you think about it in a way, it's kind of like, for me, running when I run Paranoia, keep it lighthearted and silly. But yeah. in Paranoia, you're somebody's getting smoked every five minutes. Yeah, but they've got clones. so Yeah. So Whereas in Barbarians, you got to be trying to get killed. You no, really got to try. I ran a campaign of it for six months or something, and... It's like I could hardly even force a death roll in it, but even then, like you have to roll a 10 on a die 10 when you go down for it to be up, you're dead. Like if you go below zero, which is rare, it's like if you roll any, you roll one through nine, yeah, you're fine. You know what I mean? You know. And at some point in the near future, we'll do a video review of Barbarians. Yeah, that would be cool. Because I was thinking about us doing some of those and just doing them really short and sweet. Because mm -hmm. you can find probably the 20-minute video about this or that, and it's like, here's five minutes. I like it. Why do I like it? Okay, good. We're done. Get out. Yeah, yeah. And we could you know, show some of the artwork or something. And okay, you good with that? Yeah, that was great. All right, I mentioned on the last one that we had some uh, a letter from uh, Mr. Lilies himself. Oh my, or as he says, feedback from the Long Con VIP. Oh my, which is true. It's true, it's true. Okay, I can say I have listened to every single no class RPG podcast. God bless you. So we salute you, sir. Yes. I have a long commute to work and spend a lot of time on the tractor. Podcasts and audiobooks are my jam. Mm -hmm. I have sufficiently spread the good word about Long Con. I have offered to chauffeur people in my wife's suburban from Dallas to the con. Yeah, where's Jacobo? And he says he thinks he's coming back this year. Okay, good, good. But he says also that he's uh, pretty much talked to his whole gaming group about coming wow so good hope you land them yeah. play this clip for them please come to the long con you'll love it you're, you're gonna love it we wouldn't steer you wrong never okay so some of this feedback that we ask for uh oh he likes to hear about the gaming sessions and home campaigns share more of that okay he would like to hear about any games that we have run or played since the last podcast Mm -hmm. have, I, have we run or played in any games since the last podcast? I don't. Yeah, technically. Well, I but, would say that night I played in Savage Worlds at the game club. But that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, I don't get much chance to play, sadly, or run really these days. And I played uh, some 5e that night, yeah. but I don't have a great story to tell you about it right now. I couldn't tell you what happened at all. And that's not 
yeah. on the group or on the yeah. GM or anything. No. That's just whoosh, we, well, we got a lot of stuff of going on, and we still got a little COVID brain probably. But no, I had a lot of fun with my game, and uh, just for fun, I'm playing a. Well, his his last name is Black Tooth, so you know he's a he's a half orc. That's a, that's Wait our. Wait a minute, we'll get there. Okay, okay. Black no, because you said he's a half orc. Yeah, that's outlawed. The topic for today is going to be one D and D. Oh, that's right. And there are no halves anymore. Oh, you're right, right. Yeah, we'll one get and to a half. That. Yeah, one and a half. So we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to but that. Yeah, go anyway. ahead. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just yeah, but talking about we played Savage Worlds. Uh, we've got a campaign going at the club, which is at the awesome, and incredibly ooh la la Dragon's Nest in Kilgore, Texas. Wonderful people, great store. Don't buy for anyone else. Um, I'm kidding, but anyway, but they're good people. Um, anywho. Uh, we were playing a Pathfinder adventure that Gary converted over to the new Savage Worlds Pathfinder and uh, best of both worlds. And I was playing a half orc and I had a lot of fun. There was usual Matt half orc shenanigans, but like at one point, like we're taking a boat to attack the ship of pirates. And I made sure my half orc was out at the front one foot up, you know, holding his, you know, two hand sword over his shoulder. And I was playing the whole, like, the rest of y'all just work for me kind of, you know, and they're like only in his mind, you know, and, uh, but, um, Oh, I, I hit something and like, Oh yeah. Uh, Gary's like, tell me what you do. And like, I cut him in twain or whatever and said something amusing, which I can't remember now, but uh, Eddie, uh, Gary gave me a Benny. He was like, it, I had Gary almost fell out of his chair laughing. I wish I could remember, but anyway, we had a lot of fun. Um, and some of the big fun with that is the exploding dice, which is why I love that when I do that in my funnel games. Uh, somebody was like, well, all you have is a die four, but the die four like exploded three or four times. And the guy who should never notice anything spotted something, you know. And so anyway, we, we've been having a lot of fun with that. But um, anywho, we're looking forward to playing that tonight. But I'll probably end up running, I hope, but we'll see. I don't see that happening. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I, yeah. Have you got that much feedback that people are like, oh, boy, I'm coming out? No, but, you know, it's so hit or miss. It's so weird. I mean, you know. But there's going to be a 5E table with open seats probably, so you have to compete with that in, we'll, we'll in a see. way. But we have to remember one thing. Some people walk in and go, we're here for the D&D, but it's almost like, hey, would you? Well, we'll get to that later. But anyway, it's basically D&D is an eponym. But, yeah, go ahead. Feedback number two, we'd ask about, do you guys like this? beginning stuff that we do books tvs and movies blah 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 or you like nah cut that out so he says he likes to hear about all of it second to the gaming okay that's it's good keep it in but he's here for game he's here stuff. for the game and that's why it's bad sometimes we've done just that and went well we don't have a topic today and i feel kind of guilty and that i would, don't yeah right but anyway the uh jason's definitely one of the guys that wants yeah, so let me go off topic here for, okay off the ahead. tangent here for a moment speaking yeah. of that like uh my ego is to the point now it's completely blown out. It's huge. I have a massive ego about this. So I think we could get away with it. Feel free to check me to uh -huh. if we were like, we don't have a topic. Uh -huh. This is just, we didn't have time. Nothing sounded interesting. We're just doing the show. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Because the draw is the chit chat, the chatter, the mindless chit chat. Definitely like Lou, I think you said before, he loves the uh, repartee. Yeah, you know, people whatever. love it. They love the banter, the best yeah. in the biz. All right, right on. Feel free to check me on that and be like, yeah. no, idiot, get, get to the topic. <laughs> but the other thing is that I'm thinking about putting out there is, would you folks like a live show Ooh, at la, the long con? Because we will have to figure out when we would do that. When, where, I'm, a, how? I'm thinking after the scheduled events on Saturday. So like, was that 10, 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock? Probably about 11 o'clock. So, 10 30 11 o'clock because i don't want to compete with the games no no God, certainly not no and sunday would be good mm -hmm. but everybody's going home yeah, everybody's leaving but one thing is we're going to have some of those wild and crazy old dogs from north texas and they're going to be doing some bottle tech i mean battle tech and so i'm wondering we ought to ask them hey what night do you think you guys are going to stay a little later I having think friday fun? friday okay so yeah saturday's the better day then but do you guys even want that right or will yeah. we be alone and crying in a room by ourselves are we barking up the wrong tree yeah yeah but the thing is is we've got 
more mics so we could like have an open mic thing too where you oh, come yeah. up and like hey my question is why Ooh, do you guys do this shit i like that when, when are you going to shut up and you go away you guys suck and i hate you please stop yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. i mean this would be your chance if you're coming to the long con to tell us to stop yeah or to say talk about this or hey you talked about this story but you didn't give us the whole oh, story oh yeah, yeah this and, would be your chance I've to hear a couple, all the bull crap a couple of cervezas and i'm have to spill the beans but only a couple <laughs> Well, duh. <laughs> well, duh. I don't need you fighting David Beatty again this year. <laughs> yeah, Beatty's my butt. I love David, man. But anyway. I didn't think he was coming back after that. I really, We I was, turned I it around. It too, yeah. But I, I don't remember. The next day, I was like, what did I do? I don't, I literally, was, I blacked out. But and we I could mean, just play that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. That could be part of the show is just playing that episode. You suck. But anyway, Matt's carry on. review, since he doesn't remember any of that. I really don't. It's That's a fantastic okay. episode. Oh, yeah. If you hate Matt. Exactly. Which yeah. I do. So <laughs> it's one of my favorites. <laughs> and if you play it, I'll hate you. So fair enough. Um, all right, it's a win win. Yeah, exactly. All right. So live show at Long Con. We'll put it up on one of our, uh, the like the Long Con page, Facebook page, or something like that for you to vote on and hurt our feelings. Yeah. But I mean, let us know if that's something you would be like good idea or horrible idea. And thank you for the feedback. This is great, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can catch back up to this. Okay. He doesn't watch a lot of uh, TV or movies, but he likes to hear our recommendations. You know, sure, sure. Cut through the crap for him. Well, that's kind of me. I don't watch much TV. I want to recommend, I don't watch unless somebody recommends it anymore. Yeah. I would like to see you guys do a best of the best episode. Oh. So that's kind of one of those, you know, at the end of the year, everybody does that. But we can always jump on that bandwagon too. Why not? Yeah, why not? Uh, so what was the best show, movie, games, et cetera, for 2021? Uh, maybe suggest some comic books by genre. Oh. Yes, a best of 2021 show, well, 2022 yeah, this could be point, in the works. They were pretty late in the year, so yeah. But we could do that. But the question would be, do we talk about things that we saw in 2022? Mm -hmm. Like I saw The Thing with Kurt Russell. That mm -hmm. was great. Yeah, but that's not from 2022. Does right. it have to be or does it just have to be like the best movie I saw in 2022 was? Well, sad to say if the best thing you watched all year was The Thing, that speaks volumes about current movies or something, I guess. Really? Yeah, yeah. Don't you love The Thing? I do love The Thing, yeah. So what have you seen, Mr. Smarty? What have you seen this year that's better than The Thing? Not a thing. The Thing's great. It's the best ever. All right. I guess it's yeah. taught you a lesson. Not at all, but I'm just getting at, yeah. Mr. Smart Mouth. You know, <laughs> But listen, punk. But no, Kurt um, Russell will not let you besmirch him like that. I, I was. I love Kurt Russell. Now, if I'd seen Tombstone, yeah, I was gonna say I take Tombstone over the thing. I well, hate to tell you. Well, again, Kurt Russell. You can't go wrong, with Kurt Russell. Man, come on. Yeah, like the 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 what is it? The strongest boy in the world. You know, the living computer. I mean, come on, man. Computer wore sneakers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But AJ, I was trying to Apple think. Jack. If I didn't go back and listen to the podcast of the year, I have no idea what movies I've watched this year. Exactly. So we'll see. Yeah. yeah. Really? I mean, was Spider-Man this year? Or was that last year? Well, there's a Spider-Man every damn year. What are you talking about? Dr. Strange was this year. It's not in the running, but yeah, no. it You're was right. this year. Yeah. So anyway. Womp, womp. Anyway. Yep. We'll, we'll, we will do a best of because that that's an easy like out it. for us. Yeah, pff, that's yeah. that's going to be an easy one for us. Thank yeah. you. Gaming feedback. <gasps> so we had talked about uh, have you run a DCC campaign and did it get high level and did it get ridiculous? How did you do it? Mm -hmm. Okay, I ran two long eighteen month plus DCC campaigns. Both topped out with characters reaching four to fifth level. Mm -hmm. It was fun, but they did get super powerful and mm -hmm. it became more difficult to challenge them for sure. In the last campaign, it, I began to hate fleeting luck mechanic. So I'll add this in. I don't do fleeting luck for a campaign. Yeah. That's a funnel thing, and then mm -hmm. it's gone. Yeah. I, when I've, when we were really big and running a lot of DCC, we ran a number of funnels, and we'd allow fleeting luck because it's fun and it's cool. Kind of like Benny's and Savage Worlds or something. It's just uh, – and I love sometimes allowing, like, exploding dice and stuff. Again, it's funny how I've been using that stuff for years in my funnels and then started playing Savage Worlds. Like, oh, wow, this is great. Yeah, well – that's why people love it my funnels but we both were on the same page and we never even discussed this but like i would show up to run a leveled game like first second third level one of these game stores and people would be like wait a minute you're not doing fleeting luck no you've got all your bells and whistles you don't need fleeting luck at the higher levels that's that's just for yeah for funnels so yeah that's my two cents on that eddie's as well yeah yep 
I began hate fleeting luck. Uh, DCC is already swingy. I found that the fleeting luck made it even more so. Yep, yeah, yep, hundred yeah. percent. Oh yeah, no. I, and I'll, I'll say this: when I first got DCC, I started running ironical if I right off the bat instead of a lot of one offs. I did some one offs at game stores and stuff. But I was running a campaign at home, and Eddie was in that campaign, and I was always played a great character, a lot of fun. And which I mean, everyone did. We had a lot of fun with that campaign, but, but mostly me. Yeah, but the thing about it was, I used a really, really slow progression because I already sussed out. I could tell, like, I bet up around fifth, sixth level, these characters get stupid, and hell, even by third and fourth, they were getting pretty darn powerful and hard to challenge. And I was running a, a campaign at the game club, and the characters were getting up around fourth level. And my intention was, when they hit fifth, I was probably going to call it. And DCC is a fun game, and some people say it's only good for one-offs. I don't entirely agree with that, but it's interesting to see that it wasn't just me, and I'm a seasoned game master. It sounds like you are too. When they get up around fourth, fifth, sixth level, you just pretty much time to roll some new characters or whatever, because it's just it's it's hard to challenge the if they're if they're you know what they're doing and they're competent players, it's hard to challenge them. Which know? one of the big selling points of DCC is that big swingy? Yeah. Maybe you'll roll this spell out of the park or not. And yeah. I don't I don't like it. But yeah, but once you see that first level spell that you're fifth level, so you're adding five for your level, and now you're say your casting stat is even like a plus two, and say you're getting one more plus from somewhere an item or whatever. So you're plus eight to the dice roll. If you even roll like a fifteen, well, you just got a twenty three. It kind of becomes the only way that you can challenge them is screw use. Yeah. Well that's, Well here's this screw you thing. Yeah. And having a party back in the day that had a halfling with seventeen luck who was generous with it. Yeah, it got, and, and I'll say one thing that really broke, broke it for me was when the clerics cast bless and protection from evil, if they push out a pretty good casting on that, you might as well just hand wave the encounter. But still, I love DCC, great game. I, I love running it where the MTC sitting on the table nearby at, at Eddie's elbow. Love the games, love it. But it's one of those things to where I think my greatest fun is I love my tournament games that I do at cons and stuff. All right. Anyway, enough about that. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I will concur with you that I love DCC and it's a great game. And I know we all have affection for it, but yeah, it gets a little. For me, DCC yeah. should be deadly. Oh, absolutely. That's the big thing for me. Like everybody's like, oh, it's got to be really swingy and this, that, and the other. I want it to be deadly. I want it to be a challenge. That's what I want to get out of DCC. And I'm not saying you can't ever have a cakewalk. Yeah. That's when Barbarians is perfect. Yeah. Like if you get to play uh, every week. And one game is like DCC or just super deadly, whatever you want to do, or challenging or hard or old school. Great. And then Barbarians can be the one that you play the other week. That's the palate cleanser where you just stomp the crap out of everything and you get that tension release. Yeah. So that's why I like those. And I'm almost like, you know, play two systems at a time. Yeah. If you can, if you can get that much gaming in. You can convince people to try something other than one game or another. But then know? on the other hand, I'm like Savage Worlds for everything. Just learn one system and take it back and forth everywhere. Yeah, that's something to be said there. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, variety is the spice of life. Um, and yeah, yeah. Okay, he's currently running the OSE Old School Essentials in Greyhawk. Sounds good. I haven't mm -hmm. checked out that yet, but I, I need to. I bought a copy from our good buddy uh, David. Um, of Etten Games. Donahue. And Donahue, that's right. And uh, I, on a goof, you know, I, I bought a copy at last year's uh, uh, Long Con. And I've, I've, I've looked at it and it is, it's pretty cool. It's old school, but it's got some good flavor. It's really neat. It's very popular. I'm a lot of people so catching on. So off the cuff, can you tell me what's different from Osric? No. Okay. Yeah. I really like Osric. I me haven't too. checked out OSE. Yeah. I need to. So anyway. Uh, they're a few months into it. Deadly but fun so far. That mm -hmm. sounds right up my alley. Right. They have completed Hole in the Oak, which mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of good things about. He mm -hmm. says it's an excellent adventure mm -hmm. on their way to Village Hamlet, Temple of Elemental Evil. Ah, there you ah, go. Ah, cool. Ah. They're mostly level two with some level ones for those that had died and had to make new characters along the way. Died and make new characters. That always sounds interesting. Which, for what it's worth, when with my, I'm known as kind of a sweetie pie game master, but in my DCC game with my uh, players, I was kind of brutal. I, I brought the heat with my 
the club DCC mm. game. Oh, club. And, but I'll say, no, at the con, the players actually got on to me because I started to like, well, it was going to be a TPK. And I was like, well, and they went, don't you dare, Matt. And they were like, bring the heat. And I'm like, all right, all right, y'all are right. Y'all are, this is DCC. Don't pity Pat. But I just felt bad TPK and I'm like in the first encounter of the module. You know, which was um, the Mummy Bride by our buddy Levi Combs. That's that encounter was brutal. But anyway, carry on. Never yeah. feel bad about a TPK. Never. Yeah, true. True. Don't cry over the spilt milk. What I need to do is like, like, uh, like, put a skull in my beard or something. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he wraps up his email there. Says, "Keep up the good work. Looking forward to the con." Really appreciate you, buddy. Thanks for the feedback. Yeah, you are the best. You are the VIP you know, in my heart. We're gonna we're gonna send him something, right, or give him something. I'm sure. Well, technically, we don't have to send him anything because we'll see him in November and save ourselves the shipping. Right. Well, we're gonna have something fun for you then, my friend. Uh oh. Maybe, maybe COVID phase six or something. Something fun from Matt. Beware. That's right. Okay, this one, this little subtopic or whatever, mm -hmm. is based off of a Facebook post that Matt had the other day. Oh. So you had that one where it was like, pick your favorite three swords and sorceries. Oh, and it's, that's a tough list to pick from. I love almost all of those. So I won't do that to you. Here's okay. what I will do to you. Okay. So one of the movies on the list was Princess Bride. And doesn't really fit with the, the, the theme of the other ones entirely, but it's from the 80s, which is when those are from the 80s. Do you have to be from the 80s to be a swords and sorcery? Well, no, not at all. I mean, there's some great okay. ones that from other times. So I'm trying to put a, a little bit of a definition to this but just I, I, for I our think enjoyment. For that particular post, they were all from the 80s. Well, and childhood they, nostalgia. Yeah, you know, so. And uh, I mean, still, who doesn't love a Princess Bride? But it really, when you try to put that up beside uh, Clash of the Titans, they're different movies. They're, they're not entirely, the, they're not, would, would you call them the same genre? Eh, not really. That's what you're getting at. I yeah, think, yeah, there. yeah. Yeah. So would you consider Princess, a Princess Bride to be a sword and sorcery movie? And what does sword and sorcery mean to you? To me, it means kicking ass. People are going to get decapitated. Mm -hmm. It's going to be. Just a nonstop action thing. Where that was more of a lighthearted, I mean, basically, uh, Prince it's a romantic adventure. Yeah, Prince and Humper I really like the movie. Yeah. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just saying it belongs in a different, a different, yeah, collection. Like I don't of think about Arnold being in romantic comedies or something. Yeah, and I don't think about Princess Bride as being. You're thinking of eighty swords, swords and sorceries. And sorceries. Yeah, you know? yeah, which most other stuff is. Beastmaster, Deathstalker. Yeah. A uh, hawk, the slayer, you know, so scantily clad ladies, dudes mm -hmm. with massive swords, <laughs> exactly. cleaved in twain. That's right, that sort of thing. Ooh la la! Yeah, those are the good times. Good times. Is Cole a sword and sorcery? And that's again, Cole. Yeah, I mean, there's a guy who's a wizard who casts some lame spells, but he's a pretty crappy caster. And they're he's throwing glaives and jacking stuff up. And but they're like, I don't know that one again. You know, it's funny. I rewatched it a few years ago just because, like, I felt like I had to. I was compelled just to see it as an adult. But even as a kid, when you were more, we didn't have the variety and we didn't have all the awe uh, inspiring sword and sorcery movies we've had now that you can go like the benchmark is so high now but at that time there wasn't much out there but yeah cole didn't do very well at the box office and it wasn't a cult classic after the fact on vhs or whatever but i mean it still had its it had its charms yeah so you i'm know. not saying that there's anything wrong with them i'm just saying do they fit into the category yeah i think cole fits it's just we're one of the weaker cousins of that family or whatever, but I'm with you on that princess. I didn't make that thing. I just reposted it for fun. No, I know. But anyway, um, he's like, Cole, but yeah, I'll take the, the bullet on this one or whatever, but I saw it as an adult and it was just so freaking boring. And it's a, it's a grind. It really which is you a should, slog. Which that should be disqualify you right there from being a sword and sorcery. Right. Right. It's almost like, are you an eighties action movie? Yeah. I know Cole was just even as a kid it was like and remember movies nowadays it's like uh, what's his name Bay has made it popularized it where it's like what the action lets up for all of five minutes what's wrong with this movie I mean people are so adrenaline junkie keep me interested I'm gonna look at my phone kind of generation so things were a little more like I went back and watched like a mystery from the 70s and I was like god oh, this yeah. seems so slow and I went oh it's only because things are so goofily fast paced and high energy now we've gotten where something like that is just like, oh, come on, where's the, you know, the next clue or the, ne or the excitement or whatever, but, um, move it along. Yeah. But even, I mean, Cole really is kind of a, 
Yawn. What's interesting though is the guy that ended up playing Hagrid. That was probably one of his first acting jobs. He was one of and the last. Well, no, yeah. But, but, <laughs> well, well, I mean, he played Hagrid. I mean, he played Hagrid. You know. Merle. But, yeah, exactly. But I can't think Robbie something or another. But anyway, he was I in. I couldn't that. tell you one character from the movie Cole. From Cole, now. yeah. Well, one was the guy who played the Annette Wizard was the same guy from uh, Willy Wonka. Which one was Cole? Uh, yeah, exactly. The the bad guy, right? Whatever. Or is that was that the red haired kid? I don't know. But I know was that somebody Cole in Cole. I, that's like, I don't even know. Or was Cole the weapon? I, I couldn't tell you. No, the, the they call that thing a glaive, even though a glaive is plainly a thing that's like a halibird. Kill, many kill. But anyway, ooh, listen to that throaty she growl. She almost never barks. So. Yeah, but she growls. Enjoy like, it. Her. That's like Lucy. That's the she, whole reason she's she, here. They're both sweethearts, but they sound fierce when they growl. That's like Lucy. And then that's funny. Lady is taking up residence in her doghouse. Oh, my. And uh, Lucy's scared to go in her house because this little, uh, whatever that little dog is, like Pekingese or something, is like growls at her. And she looks at me all sad. And I'm like, you're the bigger dog by 60 pounds. Go whoop her ass. It's about the fight and the dog. And that dog doesn't have any fight. Yeah, Lucy's a sweetheart. Anyway, we went off topic but yeah as far as those movies yeah but so other than what was your comment other than yeah like uh cole and the princess bride or whatever that's it i didn't go through the whole list but, and say but, which ones are and which but i will ones aren't. ask you what what are your three like if you had like your top three of that list it's a tough one isn't it because there's so much good stuff well there. the thing is like out of all those movies i might take princess bride wow okay it's like in your top of your top three but i don't really consider that a swords and sorcery. So okay, let's say or if we, I was like, oh, let me show you this swords and sorcery movie. Yeah. It's going to be action packed, and people are hanging from the rafters and getting chopped in half, and blah yeah. blah blah. That one I wouldn't be like, Matt, yeah. let's sit down and watch this ass kicking movie. Yeah. All right. So let's say we remove Princess Bride and Cole. Now, top three it's, movies in there. I think I said it was like Conan, Conan, and Beastmaster. Wow. And those, you know, there really there are no wrong answers because I mean I remember seeing everybody posted one. different stuff, and I was like. I mean, yeah, I like. I agree with that one. I agree with. That. I mean, because yeah, I mean, the the Conan movies were great, particularly the first one. Um, Beastmaster is one I've watched how many times in my lifetime, and even Willow. I mean, you know, that one you might go, that's a children's movie or something, but eh, still, it's got sword play, it's got sorcery, people die. You know, I mean, run through with swords, pretty brutal. You know, I mean, so and great special effects for its time. Do you know the thing with Willow was? Uh, uh, Lucas wanted to get the rights to the Hobbit and couldn't. So he's like, F you, I'll make my own Hobbit. And that's how Willow came about. She's moving the curtain or something. Yeah, she's got to see what's outside. Yeah, That must be what's aggravating her. Something's out there. Um, someone's putting strange computers on your doorstep. Again. Yeah. Okay, books and comic books, finally. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I to, wow, I haven't had to open my phone yet, hardly. <laughs> All right. That was Matt. Whatever. Um, here we go. Oh, yeah. Well, first thing I've... Well, I guess we can. Anyway, books and comic books. Do, 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 do. Huh? I know, I know. Uh, I'm just looking. Um, actually, it turns out I do not have any books or comic books. Do not have any. Um, but I will say, real quick shout out, our buddy uh, Tim, who is Dragon Slayer Models. That's Dragon Slayer Models. Eddie's wearing his T-shirt today. You know, what What are the odds? And, uh, you know. And, it's a nice white shirt, and I thought it was going to eat some barbecue. So. Yeah, exactly, which that's when you should wear white. Like if you're eating spaghetti or barbecue, that's the best time. My all white tracksuit. Anyway, yeah. But, you know, I have one of those T-shirts as well, and I love it. I wear it a lot. Thanks, Tim. But uh, I wanted to give him a little shout-out. And I was going to say the other day I went by Silver Fox Games in Bozier to see our friend Bo there. He told me that sometimes So comes there to play uh, – uh, Magic, D and D, uh, war gaming, war gaming, Warhammers, and, and, and ironically enough, he plays Warhammer. I would remember think, Fuck Games Workshop forever. Exactly. Yeah, I can't believe he'd play their game. I wouldn't have the nerve, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, I picked up some cool stuff for the Squeaky Cage at Long Con. But anyway, nope. Me too. So how about you, books, comic books? Yeah, because uh, this will lead into the TV. Uh, You've been watching the Sandman. I have some. That is not the level of enthusiasm that I want from you. Um, Get enthusiastic. We'll see. How about how about give me John Constantine? Like I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be in the. You in mean the Joanne? 
uh, okay, in the comic it was Joanne. Is that it? Is that was it Joanne? Because it sort seems, of seems like that would be actually John Constantine. Or am I crazy? I've never read the right. comic. We will we will open this can of worms in oh, just a minute. Okay, fair enough. Carry on, sir. And we'll have to see what what kind of cans of worms we can open. <laughs> I, I see some heavy edi- it's heavy editing in your future. <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it down right now. <laughs> be sure to edit at point forty. You know. Is this a safe space for us or not? It, probably not. But go ahead. Okay, so. Comic books. I've already read through the Sandman. Yeah, you're like, it's good. Yeah, it's, years ago. It's worth your time. Mm-hmm. But with but. the series coming out, I decided mm-hmm. to refresh myself, ooh la la, uh-huh. and see exactly how close it is. Yeah, because I think at the very like first episode or whatever, it's almost like one for one. This is one issue. Mm-hmm. It's very well done. Cool. Some stuff in the first issue, I was like, I don't remember that. I think they changed that up. I went back and read the comic, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm stupid. They did it panel for panel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, dumb dumb. Yeah. So if you watch the whole entire Sandman Netflix series, Uh you should read the comics one through 18. That's how much of it it covers. Wow. Cool. So if you want to just read that or you just want to see what's coming, like if you're like, I'll read the book before I watch the movie. Yeah. If you watch, if you read the first 18 comics, I don't think you'll spoil anything for yourself. Didn't they do like a bonus episode or something? Yeah. And Mm. that's in that run too. The bonus episode is... The Dream of Thousand Cats and Calypso. Mm-hmm. And I don't think these are big spoilers, but I'll say The Dream of a Thousand Cats is a story told from a cat's point of view. Oh, wow. It's pretty good, but I don't, what's the way to say this? That there is a trigger warning. Oh. So if you love cats like my mother in law, mm-hmm. you probably, there's one little part that might ruin that episode for you, but otherwise mm-hmm. it'd be fantastic. Okay. And then Calypso is about. Uh, or a writer who has captured the muse Calypso uh-huh. and has been keeping her as his own little golden goose per se to get ideas from mm-hmm. and basically torturing her wow. and doing all kinds of horrible things to her. Wow. I'll put that out there for you as another trigger warning that it's not yeah. nearly as bad as it is in the comics. Yeah. With that, it's just like the door closes yeah. in the show, which is like, yeah, I was, That's- Kind of wondering how you were going to handle that. Right, right, yeah. Wow. So, comics, they're good. Check them out if you want to check out the show 1 through 18. Okay, Mm -hmm. the show itself. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you're done with books and comic books. Yeah, that's all I had. Okay. Do you want to talk about the Sandman show? Do you want to say things that we can't take back? Well, I mean, okay. Like, anyway, and we're probably just yammering about something that people like, who gives a crap? Yeah. But anyway, it's just that just kind of stuck in my craw a little bit, but I'll probably go back and finish it because I've, I mean, it sounds good and I've heard good things about it anyway. Now to go completely the other direction, (laughs) here's another show on Netflix Uh that I've really uh, gotten into that was recommended by one of my wife's friends. It's Uh called old enough and what it is is it's a japanese like reality show Uh where they have a little kid do an errand it'll be like this kid is uh three years old and eight months we're gonna have him go down to the store buy seven different things and walk back and it'll be like half a mile each way don't get lost don't get run over by a car we'll see you when you get here okay and it's really cute Okay. So far, all the kids have survived their, <laughs> Thank goodness their, their, their errands. <laughs> <laughs> but it is crazy when you think about it to like U.S. parents now. Yeah. Oh, the helicoptering and the yeah. smothering and yeah. the babying or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, hey, send the kid down there for a pack of smokes well, and come back. I, no, I remember ba- when like I, back in the day. I remember, yeah, back in the day. It'd be, I'd be walking to school, walk to school when I was like in third fourth grade or whatever and it'd be like uh i get there in the janitor go hey joey here's a dollar go get me some snuff and i'd go down to a little country store down the hill a little further and get him his snuff and no one said we can't sell tobacco to a kid i mean yeah and it was and he's like thanks kid you know whatever he'd give me a nickel out of the change it was left or something but there was a good one where they were out uh picking the oranges and they send the kid home to make orange juice put it on ice and bring it back for the family to drink and that kid just screwed around for hours <laughs> It's one of those things that's like, that's if your mom told you to do something back in the day and then you screwed around for hours, mm-hmm. you'd get beat. And it's like, what yeah. if there was the film to go along with that? Yeah. So it was pretty funny. It's pretty cute. That is funny. It's probably nobody in our audience would be entertained by this show but yeah. me, but maybe your wife. 
your lovely, yeah. lovely wives out there. That's right. Wives and girlfriends. That's right. Um, so kind of riffing off last time or whenever you told me about that, Nathan for you has that new show on HBO. Well, I started to watch the first episode and man, it was so peculiar. Yeah. Just kind of makes you almost a little uncomfortable. It's so, but he is and his guest is in the theme. And I could, I was like, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, it's so odd, but um, yeah, I did watch about half of that first episode. But it was getting late, but yeah, it was, it was a little, it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Very it gets worse. Uh, wow. And then it gets better uh-huh. and then it gets worse. And I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's like watching a train wreck, uh-huh. but it's just watching some real, but I mean, that, weird performance. He's art. so odd, sort of peculiar. And his guest was, and the whole situation is like, almost makes you uncomfortable. You know I mean? Yeah. There's something, it's something interesting, intriguing about it. But have sure. you tried out the anarchist yet? I haven't, I haven't had a chance, but I intend to. I yeah. always, I highly I, recommend that one to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so you can see how all these people are like, we don't need government. Yeah. Go down where there's no government and find uh, out. They fuck around and find out. And they hit right on. Um, TV shows. Uh, yeah, TV shows and, and whatnot. Are you good? Yeah, well, I was going to say, I, I, at the beginning of the podcast, I mentioned this might be the zombie theme podcast. So while my sons were in recently, my boys, which was great to spend time with my sons, who really enjoyed that time, the boys were like, uh, when we get to video games, I just let you know, they were like, Hey, try this game, dad, try that game, dad. Well, they're all ironically enough. They were all zombie games or maybe unironically. So I said, since we're having a zombie theme thing one night when I said, let's watch a movie together, guys, we watched zombie land. And I don't think the boys have ever seen it. And I tell you what, it's my guilty pleasure. I'll tell you what, Bobby. I know it's not Oscar material by any grand stretch, but I love that movie and I've watched it a ridiculous amount of times. Anyway, we watched Zombieland and had a lot of fun with that, but that's a movie. We're talking about TV. Damn it, I did it again. Yeah, you suck. Whatever. Um, are you okay. still in movies or are you going back to TV? Well, we'll go with TV. Um, and there it is. Damn it. The movie's a different category. Um, I watched the original Star Trek a little bit. I watched some Sandman. I watched Inside Job. So other than that god-awful Farzar, that Netflix is apparently yeah. uh, investing more in animated shows for their channel. So there was that Farzar. Ugh. But there was one called Inside Job. Have you seen that? No, but I'm dubious. Yeah. It wasn't bad. Like, I, I Farzar should die in a fire. But, um, but Inside Job, I enjoyed it to a certain degree. I didn't catch myself slapping my knee every five minutes. But it was... It was okay. I mean, I'm not going to rave about it. It was okay. So speaking of animated shows, to cut you off. Good. Please do. Archer premiered last night. The season 13. Were Uh you going to talk about that? I haven't seen it yet, but I was aware of it. Okay. So I watched it today waiting on you. Because I know you're a big Archer fan. Go ahead. I was. I was. I've gone back and forth with it. Because I mean. Because last season was a return to form almost, it sounded like. Yeah. I want to say season five might be where it went out the window for yeah. Archer Vice. It jumped the uh, shark. Which was hit or miss, but it had a lot of misses after that. Mm-hmm. They've done a lot of crappy stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I watched the new episode. Mm-hmm. It's setting up a lot of changes. Like mm-hmm. Mallory can't be the boss anymore. Right. So they've got a new boss and it's telling you this is what happened since the last one. So it wasn't hilarious, but this one had to do a lot of the heavy lifting to reestablish the world. Mm, so same. it was fine. Mm-hmm. we'll see where it goes from here. So I just kind of have to give that a yes, it and, exists. And you, so you're hoping it, it'll be similar to last season. Yeah. Yeah. Cause last season you gave that your seal of approval. Yep. Okay. And this one can't judge it yet off that one episode. Yeah. So fair enough. Um, I, like I said, you see me, I was going back, I watched original Star Trek, which I haven't seen since I was a teenager, but that was, it's been fun. Um, I got into Sandman. I'll probably finish it, but we've he, heard us grouse about that or else it was edited out. We'll see. <laughs> um, inside job. Like I said, I enjoyed, I watched the first couple episodes before I was going to make the judgment. It's okay. I'd be curious to hear what other people think. Um, and I, and I caught myself, I went back and watched the first few episodes of community. Yeah. Um, I hear they're talking about maybe making a movie. Yep. Okay. And then Six seasons in a movie. Yeah. One of my coworkers was kind enough to let me borrow access to her HBO because she insisted I go check out Game of Thrones House of the Dragon. Okay. So before you get into that, uh-huh. I want you people to know if you haven't figured this out yet, I hold a grudge and I will hold it for a long time. Back in the day, there was a really cool band called Metallica. Uh-huh. And then they came out with the Black Album. Uh-huh. And that's it. 
So it's funny. And then somebody gave me COVID, <laughs> and that was it. And then Game of Thrones ended oh, yeah. as a turd and punch bowl. Mm-hmm. So I'm not ready to love again. Yeah. So it's funny you should mention that. Like, But this. I almost watched it for the show. Wow. But I'm glad you did. So Yeah. So uh, you know, the, I was like, hey, have you seen Game of Thrones? And I, I don't have HBO anymore because anyway, I don't have it anymore. Tell me, have you seen it? And she's like, oh, you've got to watch it. And she loves a lot of the kind of nerdy, geeky stuff that we like. And I was like. Is she coming to the long con? No. She doesn't, she's not a gamer. But you know what? Ugh. But if it, I might could convince her to have her and her son to come because he likes some geeky stuff. There you go. Anywho, and he's thank you for your service. He serves in the military. Um, you were worth it. Game of Thrones, uh, House of the Dragon. I but I reluctantly watched the first episode because and I was going to sell this, but you beat me to it. I have a real grudge with George George R. R. Martin because we finished the freaking books, bro. It's been like a decade now since the last book came out or something. Now, but yet he had time to write this. From the same world, and you can't finish your damn books? Was it 30 years ago, something that the first book came out? <laughs> so it seems. The, I, yeah. It's got to be like the 20 or 30th anniversary and, and, and of Game of Thrones He's not book. a young man, and he doesn't look like he really takes care of himself. So, I mean, yeah. So, anyway, there's so that kind of makes me hold a grudge. For two, I was going to say it too, but again, you beat me to it. The way Game of Thrones yeah. in those last two seasons. Ugh. So, I mean, I was kind of like, I almost like... So probably I might would have liked this more, but I go into it with such a grudge that I almost wouldn't let myself enjoy it. So I tried to detach myself and tried to be um, non-biased or whatever. But I just, like I said, I have such a grudge against the end of Game of Thrones. I have a grudge against George R. R. Martin, who helped a lot with this. And this is based on another book or story he wrote somewhere in the same world. So yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm bitter. But no, mm -hmm. I would say with all that in mind, it still had some good aspects and I enjoyed it. Um, the, you know, the, the set, the scenery was great and the acting was good and the story was decent. Um, and there's your pound of gore and flesh and nudity and sex that you need from a game of Thrones HBO show. Um, and you know, Matt Smith in it, who used to be, uh, one of the doctor who's he's like the brother of the main character. He's one of the main characters and, uh, his character is sort of interesting, but anyway, um, yeah, so that that's what you're getting from me on that one. So thumbs up. I'm gonna say like thumbs not up or down, but you know horizontal, Vert, vertical, vertical. No horizontal, horizontal. Yeah. Anyway, the drugs. Um, but yeah. So now you're not gonna get anything from me yet. I think I'm just so bitter. Maybe now is this one based off of a book that he already wrote? I could have swore that I read in the, the in betweens. Yeah. And so again, that's like I said, I'm, that even grates me more. It's like, so you had time to write a book based in the same world with similar characters, but you couldn't finish your fucking, you know, series of books that you were all waiting on or whatever. But well, anyway. I don't think he knows what to do. I don't think he's written too many characters and there's too many threads out there. I, I think by now he's almost like, I can't live up to my own hype. And the time has passed, pass it off to some ghostwriter, pay some guy under the table that writes similar to you and go, here's what I had in mind and let them finish it. Just get it out there and be done. And really you already had a practice. You had a rehearsal. Yeah. I mean, now he could you could have know. done that on uh, Nathan for you's show on the rehearsal. He could have done that. And yeah. if you had released your book, this is how yeah. it would go. Well, yeah. It's like one thing he's learned, like if you do it, if exactly you do like that the ending, show, people are going to hate your guts. And, and now, now he's saying that won't be the ending. Yeah, he's like, Oh, that wasn't my plan at all. Like really, you're supposed to talk to these guys and they're supposed to pick your brain, but okay. We'll believe that that anyway. Um, and you're really excited to know if you don't already know, Kirby enthusiasm has been renewed for a 12th season. Yep. You knew that. Okay. Me and Matt, C will be there for us. I was going to say, you and Matt C, I knew we were probably excited to hear that. But the thing is, he's getting up there in years. Yeah, again, that's another one like, enjoy it while you can, you know. Like this podcast. Right. Getting kind of long in the tooth or whatever. All right. Now to any more TV, sir? Not for me. Okay. Movies. Have you watched any good movies? Nope. All right. So I watched, like I said, Zombieland with the boys and talking, riffing off of, because some people have said they like our anecdotes. Uh, you talked about Prey last time. And Prey, just so you know, the guy Dakota Beavers, who was supposed to have been a real breakout guy in Prey or whatever, he was working. Was that at, the brother? I think so, yeah. He was working at TJ Maxx when he got the role. So how cool is that? Going from TJ Maxx to being a movie star or whatever. And then I watched yet again The Nice Guys. 
So did you watch Prey or you just looked up the trivia? I just looked up some, some trivia, fell into my thing or whatever, but I'm going to get around to it. But anyway, well, I'm riffing on. Oh, good. This one is a video podcast. Um, but The Nice Guys, I watch it again, and it's criminal that that didn't do any better. I love that movie. It's Not just me. a fun movie. Well, good for you. Good, good. That's just where me and Matt differ. He yeah. loves that movie, and I'm very meh yeah. on that one. It's all good. Teach their own. I'm glad you love it, though. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I really had no opinion about Ryan Gosling, but after that, I'm like, yeah, Ryan Gosling's okay. It's all right. He Ryan's your Goslings. Well, it's kind of like um, Brad Pitt. I never really cared for Brad Pitt until I saw him in Fight Club. And I was like, all right, Brad Pitt's okay. You're all right. You're all right, guy. You're all right. Anyway. Brad Pitt has the long con seal of approval now. Well, that should boost his career beyond his imagining. Finally. Maybe he'll finally get a little action. I mean, the ladies aren't really fond of him normally. I've liked him since Interview with the Vampire. Well, there you go. There you Do you go. like that movie? Yeah. I really? like it well enough. Yeah. 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 You're supposed to say, no, I hate that one. And there you go. Huh. There's the yin, the yin and the yang. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right. What I love is that uh, Tom Cruise proved everyone wrong. People are like, oh, that was poor casting. Rah, rah, rah. And in the end, even Nan Rice had to admit, because really she was against it too. Like, oh no. But you know, her be beloved Lestat. Not Cruz, but yeah, he did a great job. Well, every time I'm recovering from deadly diseases, mm -hmm. I remember the scene of him on the piano where he's crawled out of the swamp and it's like, slowly, <laughs> some of the old lust returned. That's how you feel when you're starting to get better again. You're like, okay, yeah. I feel like I'm in my body again and yeah. I'm not just laying here. I've definitely had one of those like fever dreams before with like neon uh -oh. spiders and all kind of weird crap. All right, I thought you were going to say anything, Brad Pitt. Oh, wait a minute. Video Tom games. Cruise. We haven't talked about the video games. Any video games? Uh, your boys didn't show up, so I didn't have to play any Cuphead. I, and lucky you. But I dug out my PS4 the other day that has Cuphead installed, uh -huh. which where you talk about like you own it digitally mm -hmm. or you own it the actual physical media. Mm -hmm. well, I don't own it physically. I have it downloaded on that. Yeah. So I dug out that PlayStation 4 and I played it for a minute and I was like, oh, I've lost all the skills that I had in this. So. Isn't that sad? So much for muscle memory. Um, so when the boys were in, they brought some games with them. And I said, I've had my PS4 packed away, but I unpacked it and hooked it up. And the boys were playing, the I guess, a like Resident Evil. How old is that now? 20 years old or something? Or like oh, for yeah, PS? So I guess they did like a revamp yeah. reissue of it. Well, Nate had that. And he was like, hey, play it, Dad. And I'm so spoiled playing Dying Light that like, uh-oh, the zombies are hemming me in. Let me go jump on the hood of this car. Wah, wah. You can't step up two feet on the hood of a car. And I was like, You can this. slowly walk. Yeah, I was like, this is stupid. And Nate goes, well, Dad, the game's 20 years old. And I said, they reissued it and revamped it. You should have revamped it where I can step up two feet on the hood of a car. I was like, I, you know, I played it for about all the 15 minutes. And I mean, I probably more than that. But I finally said, here, Nate, let me watch you play, son. And oh, boy, okay, you know. That's but, like the original Dark Soul and Dark Souls 2 and stuff like that, where it's like there's no real jump. So they'll just have a little two-foot block. And you're yeah. like, well, that's not the path to go down. And you're like, yeah. well, I really, that's I what's going to stop. I can't step over that, yeah. So anyway, but I played Resident Evil, the reissuing, and, you know, I was like, well, for a game that's 20 years old or something, I was like, it looks pretty good. And, you know, again, there's some silliness. Like at one point, there's a small hurricane fence between you and the male character and the female character. And, and like right now, there's literally zombies that are closing in on him and he's flirting with her. And I'm like, I like this guy. I mean, you know, I would say, you yeah, know, and that's uh, so Matt. Yeah. And I'm laughing, you know, death is impending any second. Let's take a minute to flirt. And then about that time, something explodes and you know, well, you need to go. I got to go. And they run off or whatever. But I'm like, and they can't possibly get through the fence. Exactly. I'm like, wow. But yet like the guy literally has like, rocket launchers yeah and, and i mean a pistol where like uh, oh there's a padlock on it you could shoot that padlock right off but it's like oh well sorry you can you know, we'll just talk through the hurricane fence while i flirt real quick i was laughing at that and then jake brought his what do you call the thing that's 3d strapped to your head or whatever oh just vr was yeah. his a quest or something vr which i think it's like the one you got that i played that one time where i'm doing the macarena and, and the cabbage patch dodging and stuff or whatever. but he had that and he had walking dead sinners and saints holy crap dude i was it's really impressive what an age we live in I how mean, long could you play it for though 
oh, I played it for a good hour and wow. a half. And about that time, I went, oh, shit, I got to work in the morning. So, But Jake was having fun because he was watching on the laptop nearby as I'm you know, playing. So he'd go, Dad, Ned, look to your left. Or no, no, you need to you know, put the thing in your holster. So it was fun having him coaching me. He could see what I was doing. And he had fun just watching me play. When I first started playing the VR games, I could play like for 15 minutes, and I'd be all like, oh, I'm freaking dying. I'm oh, wow. just pouring sweat. And, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. But uh, no, I, I had a lot of fun. I played for about an hour and a half with it. But I mean, the the visuals and the way like the sounds playing right there by your ears. And and uh, uh, it was, yeah, it was just, God, I was like, wow, this is so impressive. It's really neat. And I mean, the game technology is really, because I mean, the thing I played with yours is like fruit flying at you that you hit with your sword or something and duck it or whatever. But no, I mean, there was, you're crawling around in mausoleums. And, and what's cool is like at one point I said, I, I wonder how you climb up. But Jake, I didn't ask, but I threw my hands up. There's a windowsill and I kind of did my, pulled my hands down and the guy pulled himself up through a window and I went, holy crap. I mean. What you really need to play is VR Spider-Man. Oh, so wow. So you can get sick as a dog. Yeah, I bet you'd get some bad vertigo with that. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. I could see that. But anyway, yeah. So those that's my video games. All right. And that is our topics our little whatever pop culture pop moments culture stuff nerd centric stuff so we're at about an hour in oh wow after i make all the edits yeah all right this will be 30 minutes long yeah probably but now we are on to the actual topic yep. which is one D D for a name how much does that suck? I am going to say a lot. One is the loneliest number. Well, and the thing about it is that totally sounds like we're all one together, man, playing the D&D. It sounds kind of hippie fight or something. I don't know. All right, here you go. D&D or one D&D. I almost want it to be D&D one instead of one D&D. If, if you look hilariously, when I put the heading in, in my phone here, did it the other way around. I said D&D one because that sounds more D&D one, not one D&D. Because they even called it D&D next when they did the That's what the I was going to say. Yeah. So... One D and D or D and D next, which one of those two do you like the best? D and D next, yeah. But while I like that better, that was very of the time too. Yeah. Like Doritos Extreme, yeah. Whatever next, yeah. So that was a thing, and now one seems to be a thing. Like Xbox One, yeah. Which I have no problem with. Well, actually. It seems like Xbox is Xbox One the newest thing or the yeah, next you would newest figure thing. Like I want to think like, well, would that be the very first Xbox ever came out? Oh no, that one was the, I don't know, but yeah. So it's potentially a little confusing. Yeah, it really is. I, I but I don't have a problem with Xbox One. There was a kid selling one at work, and I thought, why would I want the first Xbox, the old antiquated one? No, apparently that's the newest one, probably. Yeah, but I'm like, well, it's Xbox One. You know? Which for PlayStation. They've numbered them all the way, you know, one, two, three, there's no. Yeah, four, five, right? Yeah. So if they ever change, like, it's going to be the PlayStation Dolphin. But yeah, names can just be crazy when you have to come up with these new products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So PlayStation leaves their controller alone and they leave their names alone. So that's my shield for today, I guess. Yeah. PlayStation for life. Right Sorry, on. Larry, with your yeah. Xbox. You need, to, you need to get like a tattoo on your arm of an Xbox controller. I mean, a, a PlayStation controller. Um, so D&D, &D, oh, one D&D. &D. See? see? I know it you, rolls you, off the tongue, tongue so better. well. D&D &D one, you know, one D&D. &D. Like, but oh. I guess one is kind of trendy right now too, just in general, like if you were naming things. Yeah. Well, yeah. And heaven forbid anybody, they ever be trendy. But um, yeah, but basically you, we were going to talk about it. So let's lay out what do you think? So first off, the name yeah. is kind of... Yeah. Okay. And this is one that I said on Facebook to refer to that. I have never needed a new edition. Yeah. I'm not that guy where mm -hmm. it's like, I'm tired of this version of D&D. &D. Yeah. I get that they have to do it. It's a necessary evil, which you're going to disagree with. And I mean, they're rolling in the money right now. I know. I could get it when it's like, wow, the cash flow is really low. I guess it's time to issue a new version and get people to buy the three core books. And it's capitalism. They're a country and they've got a board that's going to make us money. But yeah, right now, when they, they put out like Xanthar's, and I'm going to give them props on this. Xanthar's was a good book, cover to cover. All, almost all of it was useful content. And I say that because having been there during the 3.5 days, they were notorious for putting out a book that one third of it was useful content, if maybe one fourth, and the rest was just 
crap that they stuck in the book is filler to sell a book. And there are people that would run out and buy it because they were those sycophants or whatever, but it was junk. But like Xanthar sold really well. It was like a number one seller on Amazon did really great, made them a lot of money. And I was happy for them because you put out a good product by all means. You could keep putting out stuff like Xanthar's and that'd be fine. You know, I don't, I'm, but I'm with you there. There's never been a need to go to another version or whatever, you know, because you could watch the one E bubble go up and down and then it's like, yeah. Oh, we better start bringing something else. And the two E go up and down, mm -hmm. but the five E yeah. has just gone up and up and up. Well, and I think, up. That, you know, the time was right. There's a lot of planets that lined up or whatever. And, and well, constellations it, it that got into the pop culture Mm -hmm. mindset and things like critical role and, and uh, savage or not savage strange stranger things and what's the show with all the nerds cool. on it um because it got cool to be a nerd because of big bang theory or whatever yeah a lot of people that weren't so it became cool to be a nerd and that's a nerdy thing yeah oh which reminds me i'm gonna go into this little yeah, okay. subtopic real quick because mm -hmm. i forgot a movie i watched oh this is guar oh wow about the band guar which i love yeah, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, go, I'm familiar with who Guar is, so yeah. I'm a big fan of that. I'm, I'm what, Mr. Metalhead, as you know. What talk show were they on? Joan Rivers? Yeah. That's probably you. the one you're thinking of. Yeah. Anyway, real good movie if you have any interest in Guar, or maybe not even. If you don't. But the interesting thing that brought this up was talking about it's cool to be a nerd. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how their band formed was their D&D &D group. And the first like 10 or 15 minutes of the movie is like, yeah, we were playing D&D, &D, or the lead singer would be running these great... Uh, campaigns and they play D and D on the tour bus as they're going places. Oh, that's cool. And I know he published something through, uh, lamentations. Oh, wow. I want to say two towers, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah, he, he published stuff. So anyway, going back to D and D one, so one said, D and D. Yeah, we, See, we, I can't we, say it yeah, right. We, we don't need a new edition. We've never needed a new edition really. But a lot of times in the past, it's justifiable as they are a business and they're trying to make a buck and you go, eh, you, you, you want to look at them sideways, but you can go, ah, if they shake your fist at capitalism and not doing, you know, corporate greed is a thing and screw that. But companies, if, if you, if they weren't making money, one day you go, well, what happened to my favorite game company? Well, you didn't want to make money. Heaven forbid capitalism, but there's a line, you know, I don't know. Well, now they are beholden to Hasbro mm -hmm. and shareholders are not happy unless every quarter is a record breaking quarter. So right, there you go. Right. There you go. Um, but I, I'll say this as far as like, am I upset or am I mad? No. And you know why? Because you're not playing D&D. &D. Yeah. I'm not invested. So I don't care. You know, if I was still playing, I probably would be peeved. But then again, you don't have who foop. No, I won't go, you know, kind of thing. So I did a little informal poll on our gaming group of about 40 people. And for the replies I got, it was almost a three-way tie between, are you excited for one D&D? &D? I have to stop and think about it. Yeah. Are, are you don't care? You're going to stick with fifth edition or and play something different. I'm going to play something entirely different. Mm -hmm. So and it broke up pretty. Yeah. It was pretty much a three way tie. The yeah. I'll play something else was maybe one vote short from the other two. Yeah. But I was kind of surprised at the people who said I'm moving on. And the people that said I ain't moving on. Yeah. When I like, when I made a post trying to be a little borderline toe on the line, kind of, I, kind of go, you know, whatever, or be inflammatory. I was like, let's see how long it takes for some shield to come and defend five, four up. Oh, there you go. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, D one D and D or what it's almost said it D and D one, but anyway, yeah, it's too funny. But I basically made a comment about, and people too, well, you don't have to buy the new books or something do, 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 or whatever. But I, I've, I've read conflicting stuff on the internet. I went to some reliable sources to get some of my, notes for this okay anyway. well here's the Carol. other thing yeah is i have always got pushed forward by the tide it'll get to a point where it's like i want to play first edition nobody's playing first edition it's all second edition mm -hmm. okay nobody's playing second edition it's third edition and so mm -hmm. forth and so on mm -hmm. so i assume i will eventually be washed down the be river into 5.5 in. or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. See, I, I've played every iteration of D and D, but after fourth edition, I was like, dude, I'm tired of this every six, eight years, change stuff, whatever. And, uh, but double R like was like, come on, man. I'm like, no. And finally he bought me the book and brought it to me and said, here, you have the book now. Just check it out. Which is how I got into fifth. Yeah. That's how I, that's, yeah, I got bamboozled and I passed on the ambush, bamboozled. The Christmas yeah. ambush. Yeah. Cause Gary bought me a copy. So I bought Eddie a copy and he bought, um, tj a copy and gary so, did. yeah gary did yeah and so basically because tj his valid complaint 
I'd got them playing castle cru- castles and crusades, which a fantastic system, a fantastic. System. It's basically second edition D second edition D and D with uh, a couple new classes instead of Thaco, a more traditional as your armor class gets better, it's a higher number, not the inverse and didn't have the wacky saves from first, second edition. It's really a good game. And I highly recommend it's by troll Lord games, a bunch of great guys out of Arkansas, but castle crusades. We were playing that, uh, TJ was invested. He went and bought the books and bought that time. Gary bamboozled me into fifth edition. And then he was like, you bastard. Wah, wah. Yeah. But it's one of those things to where I did not intention to jump ship to fifth. So anyway, but and, and they were initially, we were having fun with our buddies. So at the game store, they had those Wednesday night D&D, what do they call it? Encounters. That Encounters, yeah. And that was fun. We were playing those and helped run them and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I don't know what kind of notes you've got, but I've yeah. got a top 10 list of things that are changes. Okay, go so ahead. Do you want me to read that or yeah, do you want to no, read no, your no, notes? No, or? Go ahead, go ahead, please. And you can see what. What jobs at my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Ability. Oh, this is an article from CBR.com. D and D one changes and comparisons. Ability scores are now tied to backgrounds, mm-hmm. not races. Backgrounds and just simply call it backgrounds. So, yeah. what do you think about that? Well, it's fine. That's one of those things where they, okay, yeah, at least there's going to be something because what I'll say is, I think at some point through some bit of mental gymnastic goofery, it's like, well. We'll have different races. Well, gosh, that's racist or something because it's got race in it or whatever. I don't know. And so they want to do away with like, well, an elf shouldn't be different from a half work or whatever. Well, I'm sorry. I know it's a fantasy game. So that does throw some physics and common sense on its ear. But saying that the maximum strength for a um, halfling and a, uh, you played one of them once when we played. The Goliath. Yeah, like a Goliath and halfling having the same max strength or something. Come on, man. That just doesn't make sense. But Anyway, it's one of those things where they, they wanted to do away from that. As long as you can do it through backgrounds, great. But still, it's just kind of silly. Again, this pandering, we, which may or may not be edited out from previous in this podcast, that just kind of like, it's like, ugh, why? And if nothing else, if you don't like the term race, call it background or ancestry or origin or whatever you want to call it if you don't like the word race. But whatever. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. So all things are created equal according to this. So yeah. Meh. Meh, yeah. Feats are no longer optional. But you have to take them? You get them. You get them. Okay. Well, that's fine. Is it going to become more 3, 3.5, though, with that? Uh huh. And see, Is ask that me. a good thing or a bad and, thing? And I wasn't a big fan of 3.5. Are they D&D? trying to add crunch in? Could be. Because I like when it's optional. What if a game master doesn't want to do it? And honestly, no, if at the end of the day, like you talked to me at one point, who cares what Watsy says? Play it the way you want to play it. But I'll get, we'll come back to it. We'll circle back to that. Go ahead. All right. Inspiration is more regulated and more frequent. Have you heard that one? Nope. So uh, let's see. When This may come up on another one, but I think when you roll a 20, mm-hmm. you get an inspiration. Hey, that sounds like another game. Uh, if you take a long rest, I think humans get inspirations or something like that. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So they're trying to make it where you get a lot more, which I don't know if that's kind of like, we're bringing fleeting luck into this somewhat. Well, yeah. And also like when you get lucky on your initiative draw with uh, savage worlds, you get a joker, everyone gets a Benny or whatever, like, or definitely with DCC. Like if you're using fleeting luck, you rolled a 20, you get a fleeting luck token or whatever. So yeah, there are no more half races. You're not a half elf or a half orc. Oh You're my. an orc or an elf. Interesting. Which I guess in the grand scheme of things, we're half orcs only a, I don't that I'm trying to the bridge, the bone that you throw to players that want to play an orc. You're like, you can't play an orc, but you can play a half orc. And well, and now you know why they want to do away with a half orc or half elf. Because then the insinuation and some players are the way we play it. You got to wonder for elves, but definitely with the half work, the insinuation is, well, how exactly did your half work come? Like a mommy uh, work and a, and a love in love where no, most well, times the right, the story is going to involve the R word, but not anymore you know? because there are no evil races. So why not? Exactly. Yeah. Ha ha. And that's funny too. Yeah. Well, we'll again, we'll circle back to that, but I'm sure this was again, them bowing to like, we don't want to even have any insinuation of, you know, raping our game or something like that, you know? 
which is, you know, you might say, well, that's not a bad thing. Anyway. Uh, there are going to be new spell lists, arcane, divine, or primal. And I think I'd heard there were going to be yeah, three cat three codified categories of spells. I'd heard that, which, okay. And I think there was something about all classes have a way to heal, have hmm. access to some kind of healing. So. That sounds like fourth edition again. So, you know. Well, let's see. Uh, racial abilities are less passive. So if you've got some racial feat, I suppose, mm -hmm. it'll come into play more often. Yeah. More often. And that's not a bad thing. Such as natural spell casting. Ah, uh, ooh la la. I think dwarves have been the one that have been the least affected by all these changes. Mm -hmm. A reworking of grappling rules. Because you have to have new grappling rules every edition or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe make it a little easier. It's always usually been a little too... In in D and D, I'm in three point five. Someone said, "I'm going to try to grapple," and the GM uh, pulls out the book or whatever. And the next thing you're like, "You know what? Would you just not grapple?" <laughs> I remember literally that happened a couple of times on three point five because it was so convoluted. But anyway, ooh la la! Feats being new feats have been introduced, and old feats. Some old feats have been reworked. Oh. Uh, there's a new crafter feat that makes a character quicker at crafting items, hmm. giving them proficiency in several tools and offering a discount on non-magical items in shops. Well, that's interesting. How much do people even do crafting though, right? Right. For us, I'm sure there's somebody out there that that's a big part of their game. And for that one person, bra bravo. Okay, so a natural 20 and a natural 1 are not failures on ability checks, but now they are. Wow. So instead of the old rule of, yeah, 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 you don't crit hit on an ability score. Yeah. Now you do. And I think the result of that is pretty much going to be getting inspiration. Okay. So but 20 isn't a natural, isn't always a success, and a 1 isn't always an automatic failure. Hmm. But D&D &D 1 changes it. A natural 20 or a natural 1 now applies to any D20 test. So if you have to roll the D20, uh, you have a five attack rolls, chance, ability checks, yeah. and saving throws. But they still don't cover impossible actions. Like I'm going to start fly, clap, blah, flapping my wings and fly away. Flap my arms, yeah. 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 It depends on who you're gaming with, but, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. And then the new Ardling race. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? I think it's like I heard something about it, but I glossed over it because I didn't care. But you know. well, Let me see if I can push this over to you and show you the picture but I was reading somewhere else that this will be the class for furries so they're supposed to be the divine or celestial type of creatures celestial heritage which are from the lower planes we want a celestial creature from the higher plane so they're going to be animal headed beings with traces of divine heritage which I can't wait for somebody to play that at our table because you know they're going to be the special type so you do you but i'm not going to be excited for that to be rolling out and another one that i won't be excited to be rolling out uh is the new dragon lance book is coming out the source book however you want to call that mm -hmm. box set. which now there's no box sets anymore it's just going to be a book as far as i know i could swear i saw something that looked kind of like a box set i could be wrong but i saw a picture of it. i'll see if i can find it okay well i'll post it to our facebook uh, podcast group, regardless mm -hmm. of what it is mm -hmm. i kind of want it a lot of the stuff that they've come out with lately because like spell jammer no that's not that doesn't float my boat and i have not heard anything good about the book yeah i never played spell jammer back in the day uh but i mean to those who did bravo i know george lindner you know liked it spoke real well the old school spell jammer now, i've got the old school spell jammer stuff and that's what people say is like you really need the old school stuff because this book doesn't add in enough really yeah well and by the way just an aside george it keeps threatening to you know run something second edition for us so. all right I look close to threaten me with a good time right. but the dragon lance when i kind of do want it's because that's going to be an adventure that's what i saw it's going to be an adventure against uh soft we well, remember they took the books and they tried to make modules that followed yeah i've got them yeah and so again if there's a new dragonlance book yeah they're gonna do an adventure that probably coincides i guess with the story right i don't i don't i don't know what the new the, the novel story, is about it's gonna be in the Kryn world 
the adventure, but it's not necessarily going to follow the new novels coming out. No, because I, I think it's going to be set back in the historical Age of Heroes or whatever that's called. Okay. Interesting. But I'm excited about that, but I will not be excited by the return of the Kinder as a playable race. Because that's one of those things, too. If you play a Kinder, a Gnome, or one of these new furry races, that says a lot about your character. Yeah, your, your personal character as a human being. Um, yeah, so that's that's all very interesting. I mean, it looks like you really did your research on this. So I'm hearing overall you're really excited about D&D 1. Or 1 D&D. I don't care. You I do not care. I'm not hating. I'm not celebrating. Yeah. I know... Unless it just flops spectacularly, I'm going to get sucked into playing it somewhere down the road. Oh, yeah. But why? Um, I don't think I'd be more excited if they were like, no, this isn't 5.5, it's 6. I, I don't think I would be like, oh, boy, just because we hate and fear change. I've just never been like, oh, I wish that new edition. I, I don't understand the mindset of people that are either. Well, and that's good or better. You, and that's where I'm coming from. It's like, why be excited for the new edition of D&D when you can be excited about Savage Worlds or Barbarians of the Ruined Earth? Or the Black Hack. Yeah, there's... Or Dungeon, uh, Dungeon World or Labyrinth Lord or... So I'd say, why do you want a new edition? Or what's one Jason's playing? That's one's very popular. Oh, OSE, the old school... Yeah, old school essentials. Yeah. So there's a bunch of really great systems, I mean, that are award-winning systems that you could try. And the great thing about it is if you bought the, and I'm going to piss off our friendly local game store people, but yeah, if you went and bought Osric, you'd never have to buy another book for the rest of your life. But there's nothing that says you can't play Osric and Barbarians. And it, it's the thing that I guess it's more of this. It's more D and D that is what throws me off. And I'll tell you this, like I played fifth edition D and D and I enjoyed it. Um, and I've played DCC and I've enjoyed it. I've played Black Hack as well. What I'll say is I like steak. That's I exactly where I was going. Yeah. I like hamburgers. I wouldn't want to eat hamburgers. Food like analogies, that. folks. I, I wouldn't want to eat steak all the time. I, well, I wouldn't want to eat barbecue all the time, but that's different. I've yet to find the barbecue. Because I'd say fifth edition is like the chocolate cake and you're like, well, I'll put another scoop of frosting on top and it'll be 5.5. No, that, that wasn't the problem. How about I go have the steak or the burger or whatever? The beer and pretzels. Right, right. Well, that's like the one example that we always go to where the kids were doing the D&D after hours program thing. And they're like, don't do any of that off brand stuff. I'm paying for D&D. So you give them the D&D. Yeah. It's like, what? Everything else is knockoff. But that's not. So are they streamlining or adding more crunch? And I've heard or that. is it going to be baked into 5.5? Or I mean, does it like have a rule set in it? Well, yeah. Okay, so you, like, your 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 D and D Beyond character will plug right into that. But if I want to play any other edition, wah, wah. Exactly. And I was, I think, I well, think there's a lot of people that love the online I stuff now. Get it. But I worry. Uh, I feel bad for them that you know in certain ways. I mean, but know, that might be where we become a dying breed. That you're like, you want to play in person, face to face. Ugh. You know, I'm worried about they're not going to be going to the game store to buy their books. And also, if you're playing on the virtual tabletop, you're not going to the store to play games there. And it's pretty soon that'll be your resource. Um, so I just worry about what that might do to game stores. Um, I, I worry for the people staying because microtransactions. Um, the game books are going to be like a living document. Um, and so, like, oh, you're paying the monthly fee or whatever. Well, you'll get these upgrades if you pay this one bigger fee. Or it'll be, oh, no, you pay a small fee or one-time fee. But, oh, you want the new spells we just came up with and you're not paying the uh, an ongoing fee? Well, it'll just be $5 for, the, for these three new spells. Well, you want a cool new skeleton graphic for your virtual table? Just $5. You want that new class? Just $10. Yeah, those microtransactions add up from having played MMOs and stuff. Ultimately, your opinion is your is yours, dear listener. Stay with 5e, go to D&D 1, or 1 D&D, excuse me, or go play something else. I'm not invested, so I don't care. Um, but I remember a comment. So when I quit playing 5th edition D&D, my good buddy over here says, Matt, uh, make it your D&D. Who cares what Watsy thinks? Mm -hmm. You know, just play it however you want. But if you're playing on the virtual table, you said feats are baked in the game now. You can't play your game where I don't want to have feats. Uh-uh. This your D and D bound is linked up. 
And what I worry about is, and you can go, oh, get your tin full hat off. But let's say three, four years from now, everyone's playing the virtual D&D on their virtual table. You run a great game online with people that are in divergent parts of the United States. And of the six people you run for five had a fabulous time and said, what a great game. But the sixth one, there's that prominently easily located complaint button and they click on that and they type in that, you know, you didn't allow for gender fluid elves or whatever. And you get banned from uh, D and D one's virtual table or whatever. Oh, Matt, that'll never happen. We'll see. I worry about something like that even because we've said before, you're like, they can't make you play D and D once you buy the books, you can play it however you want. But if you're playing on their virtual table, you're going to play it the way they want. So maybe they have the last laugh in that regard. We'll see. Um, but everything just to the side of that point, everything yeah. is wants to sell itself to you now as a service. Yeah. So it'll be like, well, you didn't buy the books. And this can be down the road, more conspiracy theory. But yeah. it's like, you don't own a player's handbook anymore. Yeah. You uh, you give us $10 a month or $20 a month for uh, D&D Beyond. So, yeah. I it's worry all subscription-based. Yeah, that's what I worry about. It's going to be. And then, of course, the microtransactions, like you yeah. said, of course, yeah. that's coming. And so that concerns me. Yeah. Because it's like, get your pink dice. Get mm. your red dice. Mm -hmm. That's that, an extra that, fee. That roll across the virtual table. Um, there's so many good games. We've already mentioned Old School Essentials, Dungeon Crawl Classics, Black Hack, Dungeon World, Labyrinth Lord, Savage Worlds, Fantasy. DCC, it, MCC, Corporate yeah, Masters. Which well, I did mention, yeah, DCC. But yeah, again, so the fact is, by all means, if you just, and I like people, it's like, well, that's where, that's my first experience. You never forget your first time and that nostalgia with the first game system you were introduced through. By all means, stick with 5th edition. If, if it ain't broke, you like it, keep playing playing it and if you want to jump on this next experience and we found historically people seem to um but not always but as for me there's so many other rich wonderful game systems that i can use you know i i'll, I'll never and i can luckily enough i'm able to find people to usually play these games with me but I, and this is another aside but something i thought about while i was doing the research for this call me crazy but you feel crazy right now at the game store who's running games Try to think about it. You, an old school gamer who's been playing how long? Half too, as long as you. Right, too long. And then there's Garrett running a table, and Garrett's been gaming and running games for how long? So where are the GMs? And Is then, that where you're and, going? And then there's John, who's been gaming and running games forever. And then there's me and Gary, same principle again. Huh, not one young buck in all that crowd has stepped up or is running any games. Stupid millennials ruining no, the world. No, not where I'm going with that. But the point I'm trying to say is, here's where the thing is, the if you figure the most of the people that want are willing to run these games are the old dogs, how many of the old dogs are one going to add in fuzzy bunnies and turtle people and all this stuff. Cause that's one thing I'll say is this is it's not even me being a, a curmudgeon about fuzzy bunny people or whatever. If I was probably still running fifth edition and somebody at the club showed up with their Eric uh, turtle man hybrid with the new rules for hybriding. And they were the blip blap class I never heard of. And they have these three feats or from some book that I wasn't going to go buy or whatever. I'd go, I'm sorry, guy, you got to play a pre-gen and they're going to go probably go away. We're and already pout. doing that. Well, good to hear that. Yeah. So but that's what I'm getting at is I just could not be called upon to have to. That's one thing about 3.5 got unwieldy. But towards the end, there was an encyclopedic, like 30 books involved with Thursday. And, and that's why nobody would switch. Yeah, because you're like, by the time you'd stuck all that data in your head, and then when D&D &D pulled the plug on it, went, tee we're going to fourth, people had meltdowns. Because look how much money I've invested in mental energy into learning all these rules, you know. And so, by all means, I, I just don't want to, I'd rather game where there's maybe like one or two books. You right, know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Because I'm even to the point with fifth edition where I'm like, now nah, I'm done with it. Yeah. As as far as like, I'm going to learn what was in this, like in Xanathar's and then this book and that book. Now there's nah. uh, Cruella's Cauldron of Blip Blap or whatever. Tasha's, excuse me. But that's what I'm, I'm getting at is, and this is the truth. And that's not just, this is not a swipe at fifth edition necessarily, but a lot of different games that... When we when we were found roadworthy and we got we were sent our questionnaire by Goodman Games and they we got our little page. One of my things was I said I like games with simpler or less rules because I find rules can uh, are stumbling blocks for me as a game master trying to tell my story and let my players interact with my story. Rules get in the way, and I found as a player an, an overabundance of rules. 
are not liberating. If nothing, they're constraining mm -hmm. and they, they limit my imagination. I might want to do some cool thing out of the box. And there's a lot of game masters who say, well, if the rules don't explicitly say you can do that, ooh, you can't, you know, they're, they have a nervous breakdown. And so, um, uh, you know, I, that's, again, that's my plug for moving into other games that are a lot of fun and fun to play that aren't overburdened with, you know, 20 million books or whatever. And I guess some of these kids coming up, I remember my, definitely mine was much more agile and I could retain a lot of this minutia data a lot easier. I'll, I'll admit it. It's, that's part of it, but it's one of those things that, I mean, yeah, I mean, no. Um, would you add anything to that? Yes, I will add in, if you have been through the edition wars before, yeah. if you've survived the changing of an edition of D&D, &D, or if yeah. you have not, and this is your first time and you're kind of curious about it, yeah. drop us a line at our email, uh -huh. no class RPG at gmail.com. That is correct. Dot org, dot mil, or on the Facebook group, because yeah. we know you guys are over there, hardcore guys. Yeah. And I think you touched on this one more thing. So about like, Oh, and uh, one more thing. Yeah. Some of the silliness as I call it. And that's one of the things they've been talking about for a while is um, like the racist thing. Races. They want to get away from that. Like I said, just call them something different. Ancestry species. Uh, the homogenized thing has no flavor. Letting it happen be as strong as a Goliath is silly. And I mentioned that, but that's one of the things that people didn't like about fourth edition. There wasn't that much to make the characters different from each other. Cause they tried mm -hmm. to homogenize it and make it vanilla. And, and even the classes, yeah, the classes you're like I use my daily. Yeah. Well, I have a warrior. I have a daily and the wizard has a daily. It felt so vanilla and homogenized. It really took a lot of the flavor out of the game. And I think fifth edition was a big backlash to that. And then what do they do? again and then um alignment like apparently they're doing away with it some creatures should be inherently good or evil like angels and devils i mean it's one thing if like well you can't say all orcs are evil well no but as a culture matt old yeah. man there are no alignments yeah but alignments are gone i know that's wrong think right? racial differences are gone yeah this is a new fluffy yeah. bunny world that we live in yeah i don't bunny lands bunnies in candy land yeah <laughs> Anyway, I, I leaned away. I hope that didn't deafen y'all. But anyway, yeah, but definitely we'd love to have your feedback on this because this seems like a pretty contentious uh, uh, topic. But yeah, we as always, we want your input. Yep. Yep. Switch whenever you want to switch. Maybe you'll be there on January 2024 mm -hmm. and buying those books. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you'll do it in 2025. But in between now and then. Try out some new stuff. Yeah. The other thing is, this has really got to be an interesting time as somebody that op owns a friendly local game shop. Yeah. Do you go all in on 5.5? Do you go like, oh, it's going to be just as big? Or do you hold back? Yeah. Or And then with uh, Watsy pushing the virtual tabletop so much, mm -hmm. you're like, dude, I've got a wall full of your damn minis over here. You're, cutting, you're cutting my balls off. And if you say it couldn't happen, let us tell you about your our friend So who aimed, owned a game store and had built up Games Workshop games in his community and made it very popular. And how did they thank him? They moved a Games Workshop store in just down the street from him and ran him out of business. If you don't think that they'll that they're gonna well they they will appreciate me in, endorsing their game for years. Mm, no, when everybody starts buying their books virtually straight from you know whatever. And that's what I worry about happening with the game stores, you know. And minis could go away. Yeah, well, sure. And that sucked too. And dice. Again, I got virtual dice. So think know? about that. RPG sales are not that big for game shops. No. We're behind the magic and we're maybe sometimes on foot with board games. With board games. We're behind yeah. the war games. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So we're third or fourth place in their hearts. And sales. Yeah. So imagine that now. You don't buy minis. Now you don't buy dice. You yeah. don't buy dice DM bags. screens and mm -hmm. any of the accoutrement. Yeah. Because that's all provided to you digitally now mm -hmm. as a subscription service. Mm -hmm. With microtransactions. 
Yeah. So that's all going directly into Watsy's pocket. Right. And your friendly local game store could be getting hosed. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. They'll still get by with magic and board games and all that. But, and that's why I tell, I'm telling you this. I've always had a really strong appreciation for game stores that endure, endorse role-playing games because we've seen one that doesn't or didn't initially. And then for two is the fact that, I mean, I get it. It's not their biggest money maker. You know, why set aside t space for that? So I appreciate game stores that do, but I'm hoping the game stores also will open their eyes now about maybe we should branch out into other different games and not because I get it for some game stores like gamers XP and Treeport about all I see on their gaming shelf is a lot of D&D &D, and boy you've put all your eggs in one basket and then what happens if they screw you I would say diversify you know what I mean but anyway yeah. but D&D uh, &D is tied into the magic cards mm -hmm. so they can say if you want this many magic cards you're gonna have to buy this much of 5.5 .5, so it's an interesting time. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll and luckily see. we've got a few friends that own game shops, so maybe yeah. we can get some of that inside scoop yeah. without naming names. Right. Them like, oh, so and so told me that Watsy <laughs> needs to go screw themselves. Yeah, yeah. We won't we're not gonna, you know Anonymity. Yeah, anonymity. But we I'd be We'll protect our sources. Know. Yeah. But yeah, as always, I know this is a long one, but a uh, lot of interesting content. Love the feedback we got today. Would love to have some more. We always appreciate that. And uh yeah. Yep. We love to hear from you guys. Mm -hmm. I can already tell that there's been some issues with this recording. Uh -oh. So on top of that, on top of the things that we said that we probably shouldn't have said, uh -huh. we may have to edit out or you just have to deal with some crappy quality sound in a few places. Yeah. So I am apologizing in advance and we'll see how this turns out. And I can tell this episode is going to be late to get out. So yeah. probably tomorrow or something instead of your usual Thursday, but there is a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll be worth the wait. Cause Eddie's going to do some quality editing. I'm sure. But anyway, not to make this go any longer. Because I can see by the clock on the wall, we're all out of hit points. That's getting edited out. <laughs> I'm going to freaking kill 